Right, all right, FOMC is tomorrow and we are officially approaching the critical resistance on SPY. So you want to make sure you're watching this level very closely going into tomorrow's trading session. So first up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right, today's SPY was up 1.47% and we did get the bounce off of this support zone, which is right here at SPY 400. And we're coming right back up to the top of the trading range, which is going to be between SPY 407 and 408. So remember, you need to keep trading this range as long as we're in it, which means you're buying at support and selling at resistance. So going into FOMC tomorrow, you don't want to take on too much risk while we are sitting here at resistance, which means you should be locking in a lot of your profits that you're buying at support and waiting for that break of resistance before you get more bullish for the upside price targets. So what that means is we need to see SPY above 408 and that tells us we're going to 414 and then likely going up there to fill that gap at 421. Now there is always going to be the possibility when we get to the top of our trading range that we could get a rejection. And I talked about this before and it's still a possibility that we do build out the right shoulder on this inverse head and shoulders, which means it is possible we do get rejected from this resistance, come back down towards this support breakout, which was the trend line breakout right around 395, find support and build out the right shoulder and then go break out of that resistance at a later date. So there is many, many ways this can play out. But the thing that is consistent is that you have critical resistance right here at SPY 407 to 408. As long as you remain disciplined and you're locking your profits at that level, there is no way getting a pullback from that level can cause you any pain in your trading account. If you're trying to go long at resistance and we get rejected, you're going to get caught holding the bag. And if you want to short at that resistance, you can also do that because it's a very well-defined risk level. But do keep in mind, we are in a bull trend in the short term. So shorting is going to be a lot more difficult of a trade. It is going to be a lot simpler to buy at support levels. And that is why you continue to see the market pushing higher. So tomorrow's trade plan is very simple. Watch critical resistance at SPY 408. And then we have critical support down here at 400, 398, and 395. It is that simple. Do not overcomplicate it. Let the price action guide you from there. You have all of the price targets in both directions and you know all of the critical levels. So all you need to do now is watch the price and then react to whatever the price is telling you to do. We did go up on increasing volume today, so we are starting to squeeze out the shorts. And once we squeeze all of the short sellers out of this market, it is then and only then the market will likely start to pull back. So do not be part of the majority that are shorting the bull trend. Wait till the market rolls over and starts to die and then you can short it like there's no tomorrow. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were up 1.5% today. And again, the triple Qs are at the top of the trading range, which is going to be this critical resistance at 294. Remember, the longer we spend above 294, the more and more this looks like a giant double bottom off of 260. So you need to be prepared for the fact that this market could be a lot more bullish than you ever imagined. And you cannot say otherwise if the chart is telling you it is bullish. Remember, you're trading the chart and the chart is what pays you. So if you're going against what the chart is saying, you are going to lose money. Right now, the chart is telling us it's trying to go higher. And that is confirmed with the second day back over this critical resistance, even though we have not yet seen any follow through. But from here, if we continue to see follow through, we will evict this bear from his perch and we will likely go fill that gap at 308. So in the triple Qs, the top of the trading range is anywhere between 294 and about 296. And if we do continue to close higher than these levels, we are likely going to fill that gap at 308. To the downside, you have very critical support right here at 288. So that is where you want to get a lot more bullish at support. And if we break 288, we're likely coming back down towards 280. So trade the range and follow the price action and do not overcomplicate it. And we are still in a bull trend in the short term, especially while we're above the support trend line. In the Dow Jones, we were up 1.12% and we're back up to the top of the trading range of this flag, which is going to be this resistance at 341. If we break 341, we have resistance at 343 and then 346. And then if we break all of that resistance, we're likely going to 350. To the downside, we now have critical support at 337. And if we break that, we're likely coming back down to the bottom of this flag at 332. And below 332, we're likely coming back down to 327. The Bollinger Bands are squeezing, so don't expect a lot of volatility in the Dow Jones. And you can tell it's on very low volume. So this is definitely the low volume boring index to be trading right now. 
so you could find a lot more fireworks over there in the tech sector. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were up 2.43% today. And again, we're getting confirmation of the bull breakout because we now have the third day in a row closing above critical resistance at 188. And we took out all of the previous daily highs, which means we did get the close above 190, which means we're likely well on our way to 195 and then 197. So if the small caps are leading the way higher, this is all of the evidence you need to tell us we're likely going to see the breakout in the SPY and the triple Qs. Ignore this if you want, but if you're staying objective and following the chart, there's no way you can look at this chart and see anything other than a bull trend of higher highs and higher lows and a bull breakout. We're going up on increasing volume and we're above the critical breakout level, so stay bullish as long as we're above 186 to 188. And if we break below that, then we could be coming all the way back down towards 185 to about 182. On the RK ETF, we were up 3.69% today as we approached that critical resistance yet again just above $40, and that is also where our negatively sloping 200 daily moving average is. If we can clear all of that resistance through 41, we can start trending higher towards 45, but that is still going to be critical resistance until the price action breaks out. Downside support is still 38, and this 50 EMA down here just below 36. On the VIX, we were down 2.61% and the VIX continues to get crushed every time it tries to break out above 20. And I continue to tell you this means the market has no fear, which is more indicative of a bull trend. You need to let the VIX start closing above 20 before you get bearish, because if there is no fear in this market and we're getting the bull breakouts, the bull trend will continue to last and we will continue to climb higher. On Bitcoin, we're still trading right around 23,000, but we are below a negatively sloping 5 EMA for the second day in a row. So you need to get a lot more cautious if we lose this support level down here at 22,400 because below that we could come back down towards the breakout at 21,300. If we continue higher after holding support, the next strong resistance will be up here at 24,460 and 25,000. On Amazon stock, we were up 2.57% today and we still have the price action above all of the moving averages with this bull trend and we did get the confirmation of the breakout above 102, which means going into earnings, there is a good chance of a surprise to go all the way up to fill the gap at 110, which is also the negatively sloping 200 daily moving average. Manage your risk at the breakout at 102 and the breakout at 98, and if we lose all of that support, get a lot more cautious because the next support levels are 93.5 and the gap fill at 90. On Microsoft stock, we were up 2.1% and Microsoft had the nice strong bounce off of the critical support level at 242, which is exactly where your risk level was. So if you took that trade, you had great risk reward ratios and you made a very profitable trade in only one day. From here, you can stay bullish above 242 for the retest of 252 and the next price target higher at 255. If we lose 242, we're likely coming back down towards 238 to 232. So do keep that in mind that you need to manage your risk around 242. On NVIDIA, we were up 1.96% today and NVIDIA did bounce off of that support level breakout at 192, which is a bullish indication we could be heading towards 213 with resistance on the way there right around 203 to 204. If we lose support at 192, we're likely coming back down towards 185 to 179. On Tesla stock, we were up 3.94% today as we are bouncing off of the rising 5 EMA and we're right back up towards this resistance zone between 173 and 182. Remember, there's a very good chance we build out that flag from here like I talked about last night where we stay between critical resistance at 183 and this critical support at 155 and just take time off the clock as we go sideways. So you can manage your risk around 167 to 155 or at resistance up here at 173 to 182. If we break 182, that's extremely bullish and means we're likely going straight to 196. On Apple stock, we were up 0.9% today with the price action back over all of the moving averages as we approach resistance yet again up here at 146 and the negatively sloping 200 daily moving average at 148. And then above that, we're likely heading the 150 to 156. We have earnings on Thursday, which is after FOMC. So you can stay bullish in Apple as long as we're above this critical support level at 141 to 138. On the financials, we had a bullish day going up 1.36%, so we still have the bullish price action with the strong bull trend. The industrial sector was up 1.7%, price action is back over all of the moving averages, and we do have a bull trend. The healthcare sector was up 1.29%, back over the 5 EMA, but still below the critical resistance at 134, so below 134, it's still possible we're coming back down towards 131. The energy sector was up 0.89%, holding the critical support level we need to hold to stay bullish. But from here, we need to continue to climb higher to maintain the bull trend. So do continue to watch this critical support at 88.6. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, you have everything you need to go into FOMC and the rest of the week because you know the critical trading range between resistance and support and you know the price targets in the event the price action breaks that trading range. 
So continue to manage your risk using those critical risk levels that I give you each and every night. And then once we break out of the trading range, you could get a lot more aggressive for that next leg in this market. Don't be afraid to trade as long as you're managing your risk. There is nothing you can do wrong. If you lose a trade, you'll learn from it and you'll continue to get better at the process. Also, don't forget I have my own trade alert service called Bank Trade Alerts that only trades the ETFs TQQ and SQQ and sends you all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message. You can learn more about Bank or learn how to subscribe by clicking on the link in the description of this video. If you're looking for my intraday updates and analysis, come join us over at the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community where you get access to all of my intraday updates and my members only videos. You can find out how to join the Stocks Channel Discord by clicking on the link below. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. As always, I will see you in the next episode.